going to do a little DIY project today. Something called the Super Candle. I've been using this to not only cook on, but I've also been using it for light as well and warmth at night. It's pretty warm. This is actually the, the one I used last year and it's, you can see, even though I used it quite heavily over one trip, I still have quite a bit left. And I use this in place of my sterno or my chafing dish fuel that I've been so happy with all these years. But everybody on disability ends up living on less and less economy wise. So this is kind of like expensive for me to use. So I'm, I'm going to try not to do this this year. This year I'm going to try something different. This year I'm going to try this instead. Of course I have my wax. The wax is just a regular store bought block like this. And I've been using a, a drywall saw to chop it up with. Maybe not the best thing to chop it up with, but it's all I got. So I'm making it work. Then I have some string here to make some wick with. It's cotton, pliers, and wire cutters. A heavy gauge wire here that I'm going to use to help hold the wick. And then I have a, a couple of different types of vessels to, uh, to actually use. And something else that is, what about this? What about this for like some kind of small emergency cooker and then you can always you know, clip the lid shut to uh, turn it off. So I'm going to try all of these. Another type of wick that I've used in the past is corrugated cardboard. It's the kind of cardboard that has the little holes in it on the edge and you got to make sure that it's cut lengthwise. I don't know, if, you, know you kind of see the ridges in it. I have wax melting now. This is what I've been using to melt my wax. It's uh, a little dangerous using an open flame over a, a stove or a range. So I've opted to use this electric fry pan. It's an old one my wife was going to throw out and uh, I kind of just repurposed it. I didn't really have to modify it or change it in any way. I just, just had to start using it. So. take this end to end, okay, end to end, right, both ends here, and I'm going to take a good look at it, and I'm going to see which way it's wound, okay, and it's actually wound this way, this way here, so I'm going to actually exaggerate that, I'm going to take it between my fingers here, and I'm going to spin it in that direction, and tighten it up. I'm going to tighten it up a lot like a rubber band in the old airplanes that you used to make out of balsa wood. Now once you've done that, you're going to, okay, you still have a straight strain, but watch what happens when I bring the ends together, all right? All right. It coils right up there, okay? Now, you notice it didn't go all the way to the end here. So I need to, to do it so it, it coils up even more than that, okay? So, okay, now I'm ready to bring my ends together. This thing's wound really tight, okay? Now I notice that I'm going to need something to hold the middle of this. So I'm going to kind of just throw my pliers in the center of this so I can get a center point. All right, so I can hold the center point together here. Then we're going to kind of let it do a controlled spin. I don't want it to get too out of out of control here. 
All right. Reverse. Right, I'm not done here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it again. All right. Same thing. I'm going to twist it in the way that it spins it up really tight. When you're done with this, usually it doesn't it doesn't unwind at all. All right. And I'm going to bring the two ends together, and voila, all right? Now, that's the magic of it, if you can actually lay it down and it kind of stays together just as it was, all right? Oh, dang. It's tough doing this stuff when you your fingers, and you have a lot of pain, and you tend to drop stuff a lot. It's like... But it's really important to be patient with yourself. Take your time. Don't let yourself get all nutted out. It's just a project. You, know, you do this stuff in the off season. You don't do this stuff the day before you leave. Okay? You do this stuff in the off season so you don't have to worry about doing it last minute. Okay? This is what's called trail preparation. This is the stuff I do to keep myself sane in the off season. I do little stuff like this just to keep me happy. All right. Now, what I'm going to do there, tie it off. Once again, see, a nice thick wick. Right. Now, a lot of times I like to take a break when I'm doing this stuff. Make sure I don't forget anything. Take a break, think about it. Make sure you have all your parts, all, you, all the things you need. This is a different type of wick. Like I said, I was thinking about putting this in here. That's my wick. As you can imagine, that's going to take a little bit of doing as far as how do I anchor this in there. So that's where your wire comes in. With your wire, it should be easy enough to cut yourself a piece that's just ever so slightly bigger than inside here and then <clears throat> by driving it through your cardboard you should be able to set it in there and then wedge it into position like this See? now I just basically bet this thing like this so I can thread it through the bottom of my wick Some people actually dip them in wax first. Some people actually put some borax on them or some other salts to um, enhance the light. But um, I cook over this thing, so I, I'm, I don't know, I'm a little weary about that. I have to be careful because this fry pan is cast iron and I don't want to mess it up. I know there's a little sloppage with this crucible so I know I need to be very careful. Okay, they're all done. <coughs> These are, are my super candles. I still got to cut the, the wick off, but uh, they came out pretty good, I'd say. Not bad at all. This one will have a lid to it, of course. This one, uh, 
putting them out is not easy, so sometimes, you know, you have to be in, inventive. A lot of times I'll put a flat rock over it or something to put it out. You can't blow them out, that's for sure. So you have to come up with some other alternative method for extinguishing them. And now for this one. <clears throat> I didn't know if this one would turn out very well. But, ta-da! Nice, huh? I like this area. I kept it towards the front so you could uh, get a little bit of reflection off the back here. I don't know if you ever heard of such a thing called a kudlik, which is really an oil lamp used with a bit of paper as a wick. Believe it or not, it's used in the extreme Arctic where, uh, where you can't really get firewood or anything. So you use seal blubber or whale blubber, oil, scrape it into a soapstone dish, not too unlike one of these. And then you uh, you put the paper in it on the edge and you light it. And ironically, this may work pretty much just the same. Only well, it has its own little reflector back here. I'm almost tempted to take a piece of shiny tin foil and put it in there. Get more reflection from it. See what it does. But you can do a lot with your own imagination. You know, those expensive fuel cans, sterno, Heck, I could have made all this stuff with old candles that I had sitting around the house. And some string and some tin cans and whatnot. Not a bad idea, huh?